Hi, friends. One of our goals at Sleep Tight Stories is to keep our podcasts free and as accessible to as many people as possible. And our sponsors help us do that. But we know not everyone likes ads. So we have some news for you. Starting this June, we are offering our premium ad-free feed for a donation of as little as $4 per month. Not only will you get to listen ad-free, but you also get bonus stories and shout-outs. To listen ad-free and support the show, please visit sleeptightpremium.com. That's sleeptightpremium.com. Thank you. Hello, friends. And welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. I'd like to say a happy belated birthday to Rye L. from Washington State, who celebrated her ninth birthday on June 28th. A happy belated birthday to Cashel, who turned five on June 28th. A happy belated birthday to Lauren, a.k.a. Lulu, from San Francisco, who turned seven on June 28th. Happy birthday to Luna, who turned six on June 30th. And a happy birthday to River, who is turning three on July 1st. Happy birthday to you all. I hope you have a wonderful day. This is a story about Raggedy Ann. Marcella's parents have a friend over who wants to see Raggedy Ann. He asks Marcella if he can borrow her for a few days. And when he brings Raggedy Ann back, she has a great story to share with the other dolls. Raggedy Ann's New Sisters Marcella was having a tea party up in the nursery when Daddy called to her. So she left the dollies sitting around the tiny table and ran downstairs carrying Raggedy Ann with her. Mama, Daddy, and a strange man were talking in the living room, and Daddy introduced Marcella to the stranger. He was a large man with kind eyes and a cheery smile, as pleasant as Raggedy Ann's. He was a dear friend of Marcella's father and mother. He picked up Marcella and put his fingers in her curls as he talked to her father and mother. So of course, Raggedy Ann liked him from the beginning. I have two little girls, he told Marcella. Their names are Virginia and Doris. And one time when we were at the seashore, they were playing in the sand and they covered up Freddy, Doris's boy doll in the sand. They were playing that Freddy was bathing and that he wanted to be covered with the clean white sand just as the other bathers did. And when they had covered Freddy, they took their little pails and shovels and went farther down the beach to play and forgot all about Freddy. Now, when it came time for us to go home, Virginia and Doris remembered Freddy and ran down to get him. But the tide had come in and Freddy was away out under the water, and they could not find him. Virginia and Doris were very sad, and they talked of Freddy all the way home. It was too bad they forgot Freddy, said Marcella. Yes, indeed it was, the new friend replied as he took Raggedy Ann up and made her dance. 
But it turned out all right after all. For do you know what happened to Freddy? No. What happened to him? Marcella asked. Well, first of all, when Freddy was covered with the sand, he enjoyed it immensely. And he did not mind it so much when the tide came up over him. For he felt Virginia and Doris would return and get him. But in a short time, Freddy felt the sand above him move, as if someone was digging him out. Soon his head was uncovered, and he could look right up through the pretty green water. And what do you think was happening? The tide fairies were uncovering Freddy. When he was completely uncovered, the Tide Fairies swam with Freddy away out to the Undertow Fairies. The Undertow Fairies took Freddy and swam with him away out to the Roller Fairies. The Roller Fairies carried Freddy up to the surface and tossed him up to the Spray Fairies, who carried him to the Wind Fairies. And the Wind Fairies? Marcella asked breathlessly. The wind fairies carried Freddy right to our garden, and there Virginia and Doris found him, none the worse for his wonderful adventure. Freddy must have enjoyed it, and your little girls must have been very glad to get Freddy back again, said Marcella. Raggedy Ann went up in the air on the tail of a kite one day, and fell off and was lost. So now I am very careful with her. Would you let me take Raggedy Ann for a few days? asked the new friend. Marcella was silent. She liked her new friend, but she did not wish to lose Raggedy Ann. I will promise to take very good care of her and return her to you in one week. Will you let her go with me, Marcella? Marcella finally agreed, and when the friend left, he placed Raggedy Ann in his bag. It is lonely without Raggedy Ann, said the dolls each night. We miss her happy painted smile and her cheery ways, they said. And so the week dragged by. But my, what a chatter there was in the nursery the first night after Raggedy Ann returned. All the dolls were so anxious to hug Raggedy Ann, they could scarcely wait until Marcella had left them alone. When they had squeezed Raggedy Ann almost out of shape, and she had smoothed out her yarn hair, patted her apron out, and felt her shoe button eyes to see if they were still there. She said, Well, what have you been doing? Tell me all the news. Oh, we have just had the usual tea parties and games, said the tin soldier. Tell us about yourself, Raggedy dear. We have missed you so much. Yes, Tell us where you have been and what you have done, Raggedy. All the dolls cried. But Raggedy Ann just then noticed that one of the penny dolls had a hand missing. How did this happen? She asked as she picked up the doll. I fell off the table and onto the tin soldier last night when we were playing. But don't worry about a little thing like this, Raggedy Ann, replied the penny doll. Tell us about yourself. Did you have a nice time? I will not tell you a thing until your hand is mended, Raggedy Ann said. So another doll ran and brought a bottle of glue. Where's the hand, Raggedy asked. In my pocket, the penny doll answered. When Raggedy Ann had glued the penny doll's hand in place and wrapped a rag around it to hold it until the glue dried, She said, When I tell you of this wonderful adventure, 
I know you will all feel very happy. It has made me almost burst my stitches with joy. The dolls all sat upon the floor around Raggedy Ann, the tin soldier with his arm over her shoulder. Well, first when I left, said Raggedy Ann, I was placed in the new friend's bag. It was rather stuffy in there, but I did not mind it. In fact, I believe I must have fallen asleep, for when I awakened, I saw the new friend's hand reaching into the bag. Then he lifted me from the bag and danced me upon his knee. What do you think of her? He asked three other men who were sitting nearby. I was so interested in looking out of the window, I did not pay any attention to what they said, for we were on a train, and the scenery was just flying by. Then I was put back in the bag. When I was next taken from the bag, I was in a large, clean, light-colored room, and there were many, many girls all dressed with aprons on. The new friend showed me to another man and to the girls, who took my clothes, cut my seams, and took out my cotton. And what do you think? They found my lovely candy heart had not melted at all as I thought. Then they laid me on a table and marked all around my outside edges with a pencil on clean white cloth. And then the girls restuffed me and dressed me. I stayed in the clean big light room for two or three days and nights and watched my sisters grow from pieces of cloth into rag dolls, just like myself. Your sisters? The dolls all exclaimed in astonishment. What do you mean, Raggedy? I mean, said Raggedy Ann, that the new friend had borrowed me from Marcella so that he could have patterns made from me. And before I left the big, clean white room, there were hundreds of rag dolls, so much like me, you would not have been able to tell us apart. We could have told you by your happy smile, cried the French dolly. But all of my sister dolls have smiles just like me, replied Raggedy Ann. And shoe button eyes? The dolls all asked. Yes, shoe button eyes. Raggedy Ann replied. I would tell you from the others by your dress, Raggedy Ann, said the French doll. Your dress is 50 years old. I could tell you apart by that. But my new sister rag dolls have dresses just like mine, for the new friend had cloth made especially for them, exactly like mine. I know how we could tell you from the other rag dolls, even if you all look exactly alike, said another doll who had been thinking for a long time. How? asked Raggedy Ann with a laugh. By feeling for your candy heart. If the doll has a candy heart, then it is you, Raggedy Ann. Raggedy Ann laughed. I am so glad you all love me as you do. But I am sure you would not be able to tell me from my new sisters, except that I am more worn. For each new rag doll has a candy heart, and on it is written, I love you, just as is written on my own candy heart. And there are hundreds and hundreds of the new rag dolls? asked the little penny dolls. Hundreds and hundreds of them, all named Raggedy Ann, replied Raggedy. Then, said the Penny Dolls, we are indeed happy and proud for you. For wherever one of the new Raggedy Ann dolls goes, there will go with it 
the love and happiness that you give to others. And that is the end of this story. Good night. Sleep tight.